Hi everybody. So these things, gears, I mean, they're thousands of years old. Nobody really knows who invented them and they're incredibly useful because you can gain a mechanical advantage from them and move the line of motion to another line. Now when it's like that, it's really like two wheels rubbing together and the teeth stop it slipping. However, you don't only have to have them in a straight line like that, you can have them like this. So like that is based on two wheels rubbing together, this is based on two cones rubbing together. And what it can do is take the motion in one direction, move it to another direction, and then move it back again like that. And that's incredibly useful because you see that used in car differentials all of the time. So bevel gears and normal gears are going to be one of the key components you're going to need to be able to draw if you want to be able to make these kind of things. Luckily enough, they're super easy to draw. I'm in Tinkercad and I've got a brand new work plane opened up in front of me. And if I want to be able to draw a gear, the first thing is to get the gear. So go up to here, search shapes, click search shapes and type gear. And we'll get a whole load of gears that pop up. There are two that are important in my mind that we're going to grab. One is called metric gear. We pop that there. And the other one is this small red one called cone metric gear. And we'll pop that one there. Let's have a look at this one for now. When we highlight on that, we can see we get this drop down box here. It's got module, number of teeth, pitch angle. What we're really interested in is module and number of teeth. When we change the module, we change the size of the tooth. So let's click on two. It will apply it to here and we'll see the effect that it has. Now we can see it hasn't changed the number of teeth, but it has made them very much bigger. And for that, it's made the gear bigger. If I click on there, because I've got the ruler on, we can see the measurements. Now we had 18 teeth, and we can see that it's nearly 40 by 40 millimeters size, and it's 20 millimeters tall. So we can change that gear as much as we want. Let's change that to 10, so it's not quite as high. And we have our gear. We can change the teeth to 20 and it will give us 20 teeth and increase the diameter. Now I tend to use module two because it's nice and chunky. Chunky means that in plastic it doesn't wear out as much, but we can change that module to anything we want. It began in one, we can put a 0.5. If we put 0.5, we'll get a very fine tooth gear. Zoom down on it, it's much smaller, but the teeth are much smaller. I find that a bit useless in 3D printing machines because the tolerance isn't great, and so it's quite hard to get them to mesh together, and they do tend to wear out. So I tend to use module 1.25 up to 3 or 4, depending on how chunky I want it. And two is very often my pop, my favorite choice. Of course, we can do things like put centers in there. So we grab a hole, we make that eight, eight, merge the two by lining them up, line them up to here. It will go to the center and merge them. And then we have a gear with a hole in it that we can mount on a shaft, brilliant. Now this one, this one actually is super interesting. It's the cone gear. You'll notice the same thing, module number of teeth pitch angle, but it also contains this angle. Now if I make that as near to 90 as I can, which in this case is 89, it will produce another spur gear because this angle here is the angle of the cone. So equally, if I change that to 45, then we get a straightforward bevel gear. And if I put two of these together, what I'll do is turn a 90 degree rotation and I could make a differential with that. The point about this is you can make that angle as much as you want. So let's say we'll put that at 65 and the angle has changed. Now I can increase that as well. Like I said, I prefer module two. So let's turn the module to two and make it 20 teeth. And that's what we get. Now let's change that to 10, so we've got a much thicker and chunkier gear. And we have ourselves a cone gear. 
So I used that to create these three bevel gears and the angle on these bevel gears is 65. So if I put them together, what I get is a 130 degree angle and the same there to create that open U shape. And I created that open U shape because I came across this. It's called the Gem Pencil Sharpener. It was a US invention. There is in fact a patent available on it. And it was a fine example of Victorian steampunk over engineering to do a job like sharpen your pencil. And I absolutely loved it. I love steampunk over engineered Victorian stuff because it just lasts and lasts and lasts. And of course that's kind of, to my mind, appropriate for this kind of engineering that we're doing at the moment. So what I did was create the rest of the gem pen sharp pencil sharpener in Tinkercad and printed it off. So of course what we're going to do is make that pencil sharpener and I will make these files available in Thingiverse and the link for that will be in the bottom here. The only other thing you're going to need is um, six of these bearings. These bearings are 20 millimeters by 15 millimeters by four millimeters. Six of those will go into those pillars. So let's put this thing together. The first step is to use the pillars to create three objects. Each pillar takes a bearing in those bearing holes either side. And for the main section, we're going to use that and the handle section there, which comes here. And there's a handle pin. This goes through here. That goes on there. With the bevel facing that way. The handle pin goes in that hole there and then the handle goes on top and we put a spot of glue on here to hold that structure together. For the pencil holders you use these two shapes here, they go together. The second bevel gear goes on those two shapes with the bevel pointing towards that end there. Like that. Then we take this, put in our bearings. Put in our pencil holder. And there's a capped ring piece that goes on there and a spot of glue in there to hold the whole thing together. For the third bit, we take another pillar, bearings either side. Then we take this large plate and that large plate goes through there like that. And again, the bevel gear goes on, but the bevel gear points towards the large plate like that. This bit screws into the center hole there once we put the sandpaper on and of course we put a spot of glue on there to hold the whole thing together. On the base plate you'll see that there are two indentations. In that indentation takes this bit, that indentation takes that bit and the reason there isn't a third one that needs a little bit of adjustment. So let's put those two bits on. For this last bit, find yourself a sharpened pencil and put it through the pencil feel, feed hole in the centre of that and then put it in position roughly so that it engages with that gear but you'll be able to see that the pencil makes a line against that plate and that's where it's going to fit. Now the reason we do it like this is because there is difference in what happens when you print something. A little bit of twiddling about will make sure that that actually works beautifully. Once you've got that in position and checked its position, then you need to glue it into place. So then grab yourself a bit of sandpaper. This is Libdy Green 120 grit. So I cut a piece off and cut it into a circle with the hole in it because this bit goes in that hole and then that screws on there. Then we take our pencil, pop it through the pencil feed hole and turn. Now, the pencil will turn one way, this will turn the other way. So you need a little bit of pressure on the end of the pencil, but don't grip it because it'll stop it turning. Okay, now I'll give you that slightly crackers and maybe a little Rube Goldberg stroke Heath Robinson. But it was uh, a popular machine at the time. It's fully functional. I think it looks super sexy, actually. And it's going to last. Put that on a wooden plinth and you've got yourself a gift. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe. <laughs>